In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you an alternative way to begin a clip using Blur. Most of the time we use the Blur transition, but I'd like to show you another way by using the Blur effect as well. Both of these tools complement one another, and we'd like to show you how to use each. So we have this clip of the folks coming down the river on the raft. Let's use the traditional approach, which is using the blur transition. I'm going to click on the lightning bolt or press the F8 key to get into my transition room. I have lots of transitions, so I'm going to widen the panel. Click up on the upper right to search the library and type in the word blur. That makes my choice very simple. So I'll take this with the left mouse button and drag down that transition and drop it at the very beginning of the clip. The default will be it will start out black and then become fuzzy and colored and then very clear in, according to the duration of the transition. And my duration, if I hover the mouse on it, is four seconds. So we'll play it in our previous screen. It starts out black and then a nice transition into a clear picture. Again, if you want to increase the duration of your transition, all you need to do is click on it. You can click on the clock above the timeline and change the minutes, seconds, and frames. Or if you prefer, you can use your mouse and lengthen the clip so that the transition is a bit slower and it slowly moves into a very crisp picture. This is the blur. Well, there's one or two things you can do to modify it. If I highlight the transition and click on the Modify button above the timeline, there are a couple of things I can change. Of course, I can change the duration right here on the left side. I can change the maximum blur level you see at the top and the blur level. But there's another feature you can change you may not know about. It's hard to see on the screen. It's called background color. You have to really widen your settings to see that. But if I hover over this, you see we have a color. The default is black. I can click on here and I can transition out of white if I want to or any of the other colors. Let's try a white transition for fun. And then we'll play the clip. And now it starts out white and transitions into my scene. Let's try a different color. Let's try orange. I'll narrow the screen so we can see better. And now it starts out with a bright orange and transitions into my clip. Nice feature. Okay, let's assume though that I don't want to use this. I don't want it to start out with a color at all, but I want a blur effect. How do I do that? I'm going to take my mouse and highlight the transition, press the delete key, and that will make it go away. Now we're going to use a different approach. We're going to use not the blur transition, but the blur effect. So I click on my effect room. Again, I'm going to widen it so I can search the library. We'll type in the word blur again. And I have more options here with the uh, items I have. We'll just take traditional blur. I'll drag it down. Now I have two options. I can drop it on the entire clip or I can simply drop it on the effect track below. Now if I drop it on the effect track below, it will automatically stop at the end of the duration of this particular effect. And whatever it's at, it will snap to color. So if I apply it here, notice it's a constant blur during this segment. It doesn't change at all. And then all of a sudden it will snap to very clear. And that's not what I'm looking for. It would, if I put that transition, I'll delete it. If I drag it and put it right on top of the clip, that means the entire clip is blurred and there is no clarity at the end. If I move my cursor toward the end of it, it's just as blurry as it was in the beginning. And that's not what I want. But let me show you something you can do. And in this case, I would probably tend to put the effect on the clip rather than on the effect track. I'm going to 
click on it and click on effect button above the timelines. Now here's why, where I have some interesting things I can do with it. But the most important thing is we're going to keyframe the blur effect. I'll click on the keyframe button at the bottom of the effect settings panel. And now it shows me a keyframe option. I can move my time indicator. Let's start at the beginning of our clip. I'm only going to work on the degree value. So I'm going to, at the very beginning, with the playhead at the left side, click on the diamond that will set a keyframe. I'm going to increase that keyframe from 5. Let's go very blurry. Let's go up to 27, 30, something like that. Now it starts out very blurred. If I don't set any other keyframes, this will be the setting for the duration of the clip. But let's assume we go over a certain period of time into our clip. Uh, and I can watch my uh, time code here to see where I'm at. If I move the preview diamond, it's hooked to the, the time indicator on my keyframe settings screen as well. So right now it's going to take 10 seconds. Let's go back to maybe 7 seconds. We'll move a second at a time. And at 7 seconds, I will click a diamond on degree and set another keyframe. Now I'll lower it down to zero. So I'm giving it seven seconds to go from extremely blurred to zero. Let's narrow our panel and play the movie. It doesn't start out white or black or any other color. It starts out naturally and then it fades in over time. So this is a very nice way to start out with a blur effect by using the effect option rather than the transition option. Now if we go back into our clip and click on effect again, drag to the right and get into our keyframe controls, we discover there are other things that we can do as well and we're going to focus on those in another episode. But we hope this gives you another way in which you can use Blur as a way to introduce a clip in CyberLink PowerDirector.